I've had a few members approach me and ask me for um, a playthrough of a track, a little bit of walking bass, a little bit of soloing, and then to kind of talk through my process a little bit. So I, um, I'm going to play through a tune called Beatrice out of the real book, a little I real play along. And I'm going to take two choruses walking, two choruses solo. Bam, let's see what happens. I'm just going to do that now, and then we'll go back and I'll show you a transcription of what I played, and I'll talk through what was going through my mind a little bit. Now, I'm going to be in intentional about how I approach this. Um, I'm not going to go too crazy, one, because it's going to be hard to transcribe. <laughs> Um, but two, I'm just gonna, I'm going to stick very much to uh, like a lot of the lessons on this site focus on arpeggios, chord tones, target notes, and motivic development. So I'm going to try and keep that very much in mind and be very intentional about the way I play through this this tune. Try and uh, create some motifs, follow uh, a thread through a line, and see if I can weave together a few ideas. And you know, let's just see what happens. And then I'll talk through it, and um, and we'll explore what happens together. off the bat, I can tell you, I kicked it off with a motif. Very simple scalar pattern. One, two, three. The first two chords, I did one, two, three, two. One, two, three, two of G flat major. And then for the third chord, F major, instead of just repeating one, two, three again, I just did it backwards. Three, two, one. So I've got F major, F, G, A, G. Leading back to G flat. The G was a nice chromatic approach tone to the root of the next chord, G flat major, G flat, A flat, B flat, one, two, three again, A flat, which is a nice chromatic approach to the third of F major, which is part of the reason I thought to do it. And then I thought, hey, let's just do the same thing backwards. So check it out. Here it sounds. There's very simple ideas. You know, a lot of this stuff is not fancy, especially the way I do it. It's very inside. Maybe a little more inside in this example than um, always, but I tried to keep it pretty inside. But generally speaking, I am an inside the changes type of player. I'm focusing on chord tones and motifs. And for me, it works. I think it makes, it supports the music. I don't feel the need to get too fancy. Line the arpeggio. Three, two, one. One, two, three. 
there. I won't break this up too much, but there's a simple idea. D minor 7 to C7. The chords are moving down. So I took the line and I moved it up. Contrary motion. Complementary motion. Still playing very simply. Two quarter notes on D, the root, and instead of going down to the root with the chords, I went up to the third, which is just up a half step to that E flat. Do, 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 and then outline the chord again. Very simple ideas, but effective bass playing. You know, it works. Double chromatic approach to the E. saw that as a little opportunity when I played it. I'm always listening when I'm playing and listening for opportunities to develop something. And I've realized I'm getting a little high on the fretboard there, so I did a quick dee boo doo just 1-5-1 one, one to a lower octave. And I thought, hey, that could be a thing. So I did the same thing, except on the next chord, instead of just going up high and doing another 1-5-1, one, one, I did a 1-5-5. Five, five. So I kind of changed my chord tones, but 1-5-1, one, 1-5-1. One, one, five, one. Uh, one five five. <laughs> um, so listen, listen to the, for that. And it's just a little three bar motif, but it it makes it kind of effective. I'm still just very much outlining the chords. So let's go back a second. There it is. Outline the chord. Come back in. So you notice, if you look at the notes that I'm playing and compare them to the changes, I am playing a lot of arpeggios and a lot of chord tones. I'm targeting chord tones like crazy. There's some ornamentations and some little rhythmic things here and there, and I'm trying to phrase very musically, but I am, harmonically speaking, I'm not doing anything fancy. I am just straight up playing arpeggios and connecting things with the scale tones. At the very end of this first chorus, I thought maybe it's time to break that up a little bit, so I moved into a fourths pattern, moving fourths kind of within a pentatonic box. I see it as a pentatonic box, but this little de do ba de do ba de do, um, this D G C F B flat G C F, and then the same pattern kind of up a string. That's all that really is. Um, that's just my way of breaking up the thirds by jumping to fourths. And when I'm playing patterns like this, I'm thinking mostly just about the patterns. I'm repeating a pattern. This is kind of a um, do bit, do bit, do bit, and then the same thing up a string kind of pattern. Um, but I'm looking ahead at that first bar of the next chorus, that F major 7, and I'm wanting to bring it home right to that F. So I'm not even worrying about being within the harmony so much. So much as just playing a set pattern geometric shape and then targeting a solid you know sticking the landing as I call it targeting a solid place to land and outlining the chord very strongly so I bring the harmony back home nice and strong <laughs>
Very inside. I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'm going to attach right out all of the uh, scale tones and chord tones because if you look at, especially, you know, where the downbeats are, you can see where I'm targeting chord tones like crazy because it's, I consider it my job to outline the harmony. Um, for me, my job is to, even when I'm soloing, my job is to outline the harmony, prioritizing that over even like playing something super hip and happening like I'm more worried about playing the tune and making it sound like I'm playing the tune and playing the changes um, that's where I put my focus primarily because that's where my focus was in the shed but on the gig I found that to be very effective um, maybe a fantastic soloist might think eh, you know it could be hipper but I'm not really worried about that what I want to make sure is that the song sounds good people can hear the tune people can hear the tune while I'm soloing so they know when to come back in you know it's usually the band player the band leader is usually pretty happy and that's who I'm worried about impressing <laughs> honestly more so than the um, than the total bass geeks and jazz nerds I, I mean I say that with love. I'm one of them too, but I am mostly focused on playing. I feel like I'm justifying myself for playing too inside the changes. <laughs> so, um, Beatrice, beautiful tune, interesting changes, nice non-diatonic changes, a lot of you know half-step chromatic motion through the changes here and there, but nothing too difficult, nothing too crazy. This one's really nice to play as a ballad too. So I encourage you to take this. I included the tab in there and made sure it was uh, pretty sure that's what that's how I played it. Um, and take a look at my little uh, notes as far as chord tones um, and, and look at those changes and you can see how I'm targeting things and, and find those shapes on your fretboard. Look at the tab or read the notation, find the shapes and you'll probably start to see like, oh yeah, he's just repeating this shape through different changes and things like that as a way to kind of develop motifs and, uh, and, and that, that kind of uh, concept, that con conceptual, uh, semi-compositional approach to playing. Um, I hope you found it useful. If not, I hope you found it entertaining. Are you entertained? That's what I want to know. Um, let me know if you have any questions or concerns about any of this, and I shall address them expeditiously. <laughs>